I don't know what we're going to do. I, I, I can't, I can't eat if I have to watch him all the time. Jennifer Lamont St. Louis is at a loss. Her son Jarrett goes to the Christine Joyner Green Education Center in Jamestown. He was getting um, occupational therapy. He needs to be in a smaller classroom. He's considered nonverbal or preverbal. So he uses a lot of symbols and signs to um, state his needs or to communicate. The coronavirus pandemic forced him to stay at home. Jennifer says virtual learning isn't going well. He says the computer runs the other way. He will not do it. While she waits for Guilford County school leaders to make a decision on how kids will go back to school in less than a month, she's trying to figure out her family's plan. We don't have any place to put him. He's too old to go to a daycare. We can't afford hourly daycare. Um, he doesn't get enough respite hours through the federal to handle any of this. We're on our own. Jennifer is dependent on the services Jarrett gets through GCS, much like Kathy Gold's daughter Lizzie, who goes to the Gateway Education Center. After months at home, Kathy has noticed Lizzie's regressing. Some of her self-feeding skills, her ability to feed herself, uh, some of her ability to push her wheelchair and uh, her endurance in walking. The Golds have made life changes after they decided they'll keep Lizzie home from school in the fall. I am lucky to have the flexibility in my work schedule that I was able to uh, move things around and do more things when it's nap time. She's worried about her daughter's health. Most of the children at Gateway are in the of the most vulnerable population. So we are all in the high risk group. But every family is different. I'm glad I'm not any administrator. I'm glad I'm not the superintendent. There's no right answer for everybody, but there's got to be some type of give and take. 